section 1.2. Um, section 1.2 is about building functions out of other functions. So addition, you know, arithmetic, and then the composition. And I mean, this should be basically familiar um, to you, or at least to most of you. That, that you can take functions and combine them and get other functions. So let's not spend a lot of time talking about arithmetic, but if you have one function and you have a second function and you want to add those functions together, for example, you can do that. And um, from th this might sound trivial, but sort of in a calculus class, the thing we're really interested in doing is recognizing when a function is built up out of simpler functions. Like, I know we haven't seen our trig review yet, that's in that's in 1.3, that's um, Thursday's stuff, but h of x equals x times the sine of x. You need to be able to look at that and you need to recognize that it's a product, which I mean, when I say it like that, it's maybe pretty, uh, pretty trivial sounding. But, you know, if we have something slightly more complicated, x plus x the sine of x, I mean, what do we have here? Well, we have addition, first of all. We have something plus something else. And then we have multiplication. This x and this sine of x are being multiplied together. And the reason we're talking about this is, um, is because of how we do um, differential calculus. We're going to learn how to deal with um, individual types of functions like the trig functions and power functions and so on. And then we're going to learn how to deal with combinations of functions, with the sums and differences and quotients and so on. So I'm keeping, obviously, keeping this vague about what I mean when I say deal with a function, but if we know how to deal with x and deal with the sine of x, we can deal with x times the sine of x using one rule, and then we can deal with x plus x times the sine of x using a different rule. But of course, we've got to recognize that we are adding stuff and that we are multiplying stuff in order to use our addition and multiplication rule. This is probably trickier when it comes to composition. So let's um, remind ourselves of what composition is. And then let's talk about recognizing composition. So composition is a way of putting functions together 
in, in real world terms, it happens if you have one function, you know, functions have inputs and outputs, and then the output of that first function is the input of a second function. And composition cuts out the middle man, as it were, and goes from the first input to the last output. And composition is written in reverse, we recall. So, you know, reading left from to right, first we've got F, then we've got G, but this composition is G of F of X. The second function gets written first. We might as an example of this, look at thermal expansion. Let's say an iron rod is being heated in a furnace, but not uh, heated to the extent where it's going to melt. Well, what's going to happen is as time passes, the rod will heat up. As the rod heats up, it will undergo thermal expansion and it will lengthen. Its length will increase. So, if we know how long the rod's been in the oven, we can use Newton's law of heating to find the temperature. Thermal expansion is a simple process, it's linear. If we know the temperature of the rod, we can find the length of the rod. So we have these two different functions one of which takes time as an input and outputs temperature, one of which takes temperature as an input and outputs the length, and we see that the output of that first function is the input of the second function. So what we could do, if we wanted to, is create a new function that goes from time to length. If we know how long this rod has been heated, we know how physically long the rod is. And this is the composition. Again, composition is written in reverse order. So capital L first, then capital T. And let's remind ourselves, um, how we do this composition. So realistic formulas. Here is Newton's law of heating. I'm going to use exp for exponential. just because I think it's easier to read if we don't have a bunch of spur scripts. 
There is the temperature after T hours. And as far as the length, thermal expansion is a linear process. A realistic length formula, if the rod is five inches at zero degrees, is five plus zero point zero one seven. And the composition L of T of T. Uh, remember, and I, and I mean, again, this is sort of algebra. It, it's really prereq, but I think students still sometimes get a little confused with this. We're just treating T of T, this function inside the parentheses, as if it were a number. I mean, if we had L of 5, for example, we just stick 5 there. Instead of 5, we have this function So we stick that function there. And capital T of lowercase t, this function is 2500 minus x negative 0 0.513 t. And you could, if, if we were actually going to use this function for something in the real world, I'd be telling you to simplify it, you should distribute the 0.17 and so on. Um, since we're not using the function for anything, it was just an illustration, I'll leave that as it, as it is. But, um, but that's performing composition. Uh, performing composition, though, is not really a... Uh, a great concern in calculus. Once again, what we really need to be able to do is recognize composition when it happens. Because again, you know, of the way calculus works. We learn to work with the sign. We learn to work with x squared. If we can work with the sign and we can work with x squared, we can work with this composition, the sign composed with x squared. But to use our composition rule, we need to be able to look at this and to say this is a composition. So it's really recognizing this rather than doing it that's a matter of concern in this class. So in general, when Composition is performed. One function will 
literally be inside the parentheses of another function. So let's look at some compositions. I already put this on the board, but I'll put it on the board again. And again, we'll talk about, or rather, you'll read and listen about um, the sign uh, tomorrow. So um, it's fine if you haven't seen it or you haven't seen it in a while. Um, for the purposes of today, though, we've got this function, the sign, and we're taking the sign of something, and that something is inside parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we have another function, the sign of x squared. So this x squared is literally inside the parentheses of the sign. And a bit of terminology, very literal terminology. But the function that's inside the parentheses of the other function is called the inside function. And the function on the outside of the parentheses is called the outside function. Very literal terminology. There are six trig functions. They all are three letters followed by parentheses. Um, h of x equals the tangent, tan, of um, x squared plus another trig function, the secant sec of x. So this is a more complicated looking example. But once again, you've got this trig function, the tangent, and you've got the parentheses of the trig function. And again, very literally inside of the parentheses is the inside function. And just as literally outside the parentheses is the outside function. So we have this pattern recognition. We've when we've got a trig function, and then we've got some other function stuck inside of it. That's an example of composition, and this function stuck inside the parentheses is the inside function. And now, I mean, this is basically pattern recognition. Um, let's do something that isn't a trig function. Let's take a natural log. The natural log of x squared 
FOSS1. So once again, we've got this function. We're taking the natural log of something. We've got parentheses around the something. And inside the parentheses is what we call the inside function. And what's outside of the parentheses is called the outside function. And in addition to just recognizing that composition is occurring here, um, recognizing the inside and the outside functions is a life skill for calculus. When we learn to work with compositions, our rule will be, well, we do this with the outside function and we do something else with the inside function, and then we combine them in this way. So we need to recognize the outside and the inside function to use that to rule. The other, or n other, classic example of composition is exponentiation. And exponentiation, the way it's most often written in the college algebra, doesn't have our parentheses. So we, we lose the very literal idea that the inside uh, function is inside parentheses. Instead, we have the idea that the inside function is inside the exponent. But this is why I like, this is alternative notation. I mean, you see it a lot in computer science, for example, where writing exp is going to be cleaner than writing e caret. And it's a shame, I think, that this notation isn't more widely used in a day-to-day -day life. It's nicer, it's easier to look at, in my opinion. But also, it once again makes this inside and outside deal extremely literal, and it follows the same pattern that the trig functions followed, and the same pattern that the log function followed. The name of the function, parentheses, and then inside of the parentheses are inside function. Not literally parentheses, but probably close enough that you won't really struggle with it. What do you reckon the inside function is here? The exponent. The exponent. Um, so that's a good um a good thought. We do have um x squared. I mean this exponent is inside of the square root. Uh, let's say it 
maybe a little more carefully because it's not just the exponent. We've got that x and that one. Again, just when you say it out loud, it becomes extremely literal inside of that square root symbol. There is this function. And that function that is inside of another function is the inside function. The examples we're going to look at, I mean, we're not really, well, how to this is a little weird. We'll do the prereq material, then we'll talk about limits, and we won't use any of this for chapter two, really. But for chap when, when we start using this in chapter three, the first examples that we're going to be looking at are powers. Stuff like f of x equals x squared plus x plus 1 to the third power, let's say. This is composition. We've got one function stuck inside of another function. And again, our notation and our terminology is very literal. We've got these parentheses. And inside of those parentheses is our inside function. And again, it's, I never think of it in time. Maybe next time I teach this class, I'll move some of the prereq around and do this uh, before chapter three, when it's time to actually use it. But I'll try to remind you of this material when it uh, finally comes up. This will ultimately be very important for this class, recognizing these inside and outside functions. And that's all there is to uh, section 1.2. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, that's, uh, that's forge ahead, I think.